Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UFC Fight Night on Fight Pass and the Ultimate Fighter Finale Media Conference Call. As a reminder, today's conference is being recorded, and at this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Chris Costello. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks much, Aaron. I want to welcome everyone to the UFC Fight Night on Fight Pass and the Ultimate Fighter Finale Media Conference Call. These events, December 10th and 11th, will be held at the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas and set the stage for a blockbuster UFC weekend. The entire UFC Fight Night card is live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass, and it's the first Fight Pass event ever to be broadcast in primetime in North America. The ultimate, uh, the ultimate Fighter finale, Team McGregor versus Team Favor, will air on FS1. On today's call, please welcome the main event stars of both events, top featherweight contenders Frankie Edgar and Chad Mendez, as well as women's strawweight contenders Rose Nama Yunus and Paige Van Zandt. And with that, we'll open up the questions. And ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question at this time, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. And again, that is star 1 to ask a question at this time. And just as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, will indicate when your line has been opened. And we'll go first to Richard Hunter with KRLB Radio. Yes, hi, guys. A uh, question for Rose Nama Yunus. Rose, this is a pretty quick turnaround fight for you. Uh, you're, you're a replacement opponent here, but after your last fight in November, uh, were, were you pretty much staying training, staying in shape? Did it, uh, the short notice quick turnaround affect you very much in terms of uh, your direction for the remainder of the year? Um. Yeah, it was, it's a short notice fight, kind of, um, compared to some other training camps. I wasn't necessarily in the gym uh, 24-7, but I was just kind of popping in and out, kind of doing my own thing. I took some time off, though, to just um, deal with, you know, outside things in my life. And it, it's, um, you know, but it, it's cool that it's such a short notice. I mean, I think cutting off my hair has definitely um, kind of freed up some time for me, so it kind of worked out. And question for Paige Van Zandt. Hey, uh, Rose Nama Yunus uh, obviously has a very uh, aggressive style. You yourself are known for, uh, for for pressing the action. Does this pay, does this fight uh, look to you like uh, the possibility of being your most aggressive opponent to date? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, she definitely has a style that's aggressive. Uh, she's got a lot of tools in her toolbox, obviously, and Peter Falaki. Missions, uh, you know, have a cool stand up game from the Ultimate Fighter. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, the most aggressive fighter, I think. I think. I mean, I'm trying to remember all my fights. But, yeah, it's a great fight. I'm excited for this one. And a question for both ladies, uh, Rose, if you could answer first, and then Paige. Uh, you know, just uh, this past pay-per-view, we saw Johanna Yadejek really set the table for awareness of the women's strawweight division <laughs> along with uh, Valerie Letourneau. Do you guys feel like just in, since the uh, couple of weeks that have passed since that fight, that there might be a bigger overall awareness to the casual fan of the women's strawweight division? I'll ask uh, Rose first and then Paige. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think just, um, it's just been gradually freaking, um, like, blowing up, um, uh, just the women's position in general. I don't think we can attribute that, just that one fight with, um, Yolanda, so I don't really know how that connects, but, um, I guess it just adds to the drop in the bucket, you know. Um, the women is just taking over, and our momentum is just, uh, it's nonstop. Can take yeah, um, you know, I think that's great. It was a, it's definitely a big deal that two women's fight headlines the biggest event in UFC history. And, you know, uh, definitely, I think, um, obviously, every 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 women's fight that happens is going to draw more and more awareness to the sport. And hopefully, we just keep putting on exciting fights, and people become aware of what a how awesome. It is. And one question for Chad Mendez. Chad, uh, I know that uh, you felt like you would have liked to have had more time to prepare for your short notice fight against Conor McGregor, uh, but, but given the, the tentative nature of the landscape in the featherweight division, most notably the, the fact that Jose Aldo is so prone to injury, has that altered your approach to taking time off versus uh, uh, training actively until further notice, given the fact that, that it seems like it's better with the there would be a lot of weight men and replacement? Um, I mean, no. I mean, I, I honestly believe that 
you know, taking a little bit of time off and, and letting your body heal is just as important as, you know, hard training. You know, this is a very, very rough sport. I mean, we're beating the hell out of our bodies every day we get in that gym. Um, you know, I, I feel like we put more damage through training camps than we do in the fight most of the time. And, uh, you know, I want to be able to talk when I'm 50. So, you know, obviously I'm, I'm staying uh, active. I'm staying, you know, mentally prepared as far as working technique and stuff. But, I mean, I, I think it's stupid to train, you know, balls to the wall year-round, you know. And so, you know, obviously I'm keeping my eye on fights. And, you know, whenever there's big fights like that, that there's possibilities fights could, could drop out. You know, I'm going to keep an eye on it and, and stay as prepared as I can, but, you know, I, I'm not going to be training full go year-round. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be able to walk when I'm, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old. I'm going to be, you know, in a wheelchair. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that time off is uh, and healing your body is just as important. And finally, a question for Frankie Edgar. Uh, Frankie, you've never been finished in a fight. That being said, Chad Mendez... Uh, comes into this fight with 17 wins, seven of them by, by KO. Do you anticipate that he may be one of the hardest punchers, if not the hardest puncher you, you have faced? Yeah, I'm very well aware. Chad's got a lot of pop in it and power in his punches. And, uh, you know, I've fought a 55 and fought some power punchers. You know, it's tough to say who's the, who's the hardest puncher. But, uh, you know, I mean, that that's the gamble that we play in this game. And, uh, you know, I just got to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go and, uh, my eyes are up. My spidey senses are, are, are firing. Thanks, guys. And we'll go next to Daniel Flynn with Breitbart Sports. Question for Chad. Does Frankie present a tougher style matchup for you because of his wrestling, his boxing, and his gas tank than even Connor did? And what does having a more full camp before this fight do for you here? Uh, I mean, I honestly believe every fighter has their own um, challenges getting into the hockey. I mean, that's that's the name of the game. I mean, it, you gotta you gotta find out your opponent's strengths. You gotta find out their weaknesses. You gotta you know set up game plans with coaches and your teammates accordingly. And uh, you know, Frankie's tough all around. He's he's got great jujitsu. He's he's a great wrestler. You know, his boxing is on, is on point. You know, the the game plan that we put together for this fight, I feel very confident with. Um, basically, we just got to keep that fight IQ up during the whole time and, and get in there and get it done. Frankie, um, with, with all the hype, and I, I guess open this up to Chad as well, but all the hype surrounding Connor and Jose making a rematch possibly inevitable, um, you know, this may leave the winner of this fight on the outside looking in at a title fight for a while, or it may not. Will you wait? This is, I guess this is for both of you. Will you wait for a title shot if you win this fight, or will you continue to fight, you know, maybe lesser competition for a while to fill in that time before you get that shot at either Connor or Jose, whoever wins uh, in a couple of weeks? I mean, I'll be honest. I'm not looking past uh, December 11th. Uh, until December 11th is over, that's when I'll start thinking about the next fight. But, uh, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I'm not, I, I don't plan on waiting. Uh, and uh, I don't think I'll be fighting less for competition. I don't think there's any less competition in, in, in our division. I think all the guys are kind of hammers right now. So, uh, you know, any fight's going to be a tough fight at this point in my career. Chad? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, this is a sport we can't do for an entire lifetime. So, um, you know, it doesn't make any sense if you win a fight and you have an opportunity to wait for a title shot to do anything else. I mean, I, I'm here to fight the best guys in the division, and I want to be the best, and I want to be the champion. So, yeah, I would definitely go after that title. So, I, can I get the chat? I, I wasn't, I'm not clear on your answer. You, you, you would wait for, for the title shot, or you would take a fight in between? No, I'd definitely wait and, and want that title. Question for the ladies. Um, how does he, you know, this... <laughs> Just say in the, in the Bantamweight division, does that change your perspective at all on the strawweight division? Many people thought that Ronda was unbeatable, but Holly beat her. Should you win your upcoming fight? Does the, does the outcome of that rising home fight give you confidence that will fight the champion, that anything can happen, that all bets are off? 
Yeah, you know, of course, you, you always know anything can happen, and everyone's beatable. There's always somebody out there that's working harder than you, better at something. So you always have to remember that. There's always somebody that wants that wants to beat you and thinks they can win. So, I mean, I everyone, as an athlete, you should know that, of course, like walk, watching that fight, it was... Um, it was exciting. It was it was neat to see what Holly was capable of and how she would shut down a champion that's been so dominant for so long. But also, I think it's going to be really neat to see how Rana comes back from it. Um, yeah, I think the, pretty much the same thing, you know. Uh, like, everybody that's seen undefeated and, and unbeatable, um, every dog has a day, you know. Um, uh, Obviously, nobody seen Ronda losing that fight, or I shouldn't say nobody, but um, most people thought she was going to just steamroll through Holly, and um, it just goes to show that, you know, um, anything can happen, uh, like you said, and, you know, it, just, it, it doesn't change anything for me and my training. My training is the same as always, just train hard and uh, stay focused on the fight. Okay. Thank you, and uh, good luck to everyone. And ladies and gentlemen, just as a reminder, that is star one if you'd like to ask a question at this time. And we'll go next to Damon Martin with Fox Sports. Uh, yeah, first question is for uh, is for Paige. Uh, you know, Paige, obviously when you went into this fight originally, you were facing Joanne Calderwood, who's a very tough straw weight. I think she was ranked like eighth or ninth in the world. You jump right in now facing the number three fighter. You've always said you have a kind of a slow and steady approach to your career, but were you happy with this matchup? Was this was this good timing to face the number three fighter in the world for you? Yeah, you know, for me, I'm, I'm really excited about this matchup. It was the perfect one for me at the time. Uh, I'm excited to go up and fight someone that uh, brings higher because I can that just move me closer and closer to fighting the champion. So, I, I mean, I'm excited about the matchup. It's perfect for me, and um, I'm just excited to get in there. And, you know, to that point, a lot of people, you know, I mean, almost since your first UFC fight, people are saying, you know, what about you fighting for the title? And you've always tried to slow people down and say you want to take things at your own pace. But how is that going with this fight? I mean, if you win here, you know, there's not a lot of steps, you know, that you could go ahead before you get to a to a Ioana. Yeah, you know, obviously everyone, it's not a surprise. I'm, I'm young in the sport. I'm, I'm a new athlete. I've, I've always been an athlete, but as far as competing in MMA, I only had one amateur fight, and then I went straight pro. So, I don't know, I'm just, um, I kind of, I listen to the UFC, I listen to my managers, and I let the cards unfold, and right now this is the perfect fight for me, and I'm going to focus on this fight, but obviously after beating someone ranked number three, there's not very many people above them to get to the champ. And I know that, you know, you've said, you know, numerous times, you know, bringing back the Ronda Rousey question, everyone kept, you know, trying to peg you as the next Ronda Rousey. You never really took that moniker. You always said, you know, you're your own person. You obviously appreciated what Ronda was doing for the sport. But now in this moment, you know, seeing what Ronda's going through, I mean, do you appreciate that you've kind of created your own your own hype, that you're not the next anybody, you're the first Paige Van Zandt? Of course, you know, and even when Ronda was, um, I mean, that's still a tall order. That's, um, that's an honor to even be compared to Ronda Rousey. Look at how dominant she was as an athlete, all of the success she has um, in and outside of the octagon. Um, you know, I mean, it's an honor to be compared to her still, but I, I definitely want to create my own footsteps for very, very different people and very different athletes. We fight different, and we're different outside of the octagon as well. So I definitely want to just create my own my own footprint, my own path, and um, my own image in, in the UFC. And one question for Rose. You know, Rose, coming off the Ultimate Fighter, you know, you had a lot of hype around you. Obviously, you faced a tough fight in Carlos Esparza, but, you know, coming back, getting the win over Angela Hill, do you feel like you kind of have rebuilt that momentum, or, or do you feel like you are kind of starting fresh and new after, uh, you know, after that long season of the show and then going right into a fight? Uh, where do you feel like you are right now? Um, I'm always starting fresh. I'm always trying to stay in the moment, you know. Um, when I get stuck in the past or I get too far anxious in the future, that's where things kind of get um, slippery and I, I start to overthink things. And then, you know, I just, I just stop being honest with myself. So I got to always just stay present um, regardless of whatever I've, you know, um, done in the past. I just got to learn from it. And I've always just um, – and the, and the main thing that I've learned is just, you know, stay in the moment, obviously just – the only opinion that matters is my own and not listening to other people, whether it's good or bad. Don't don't let people get into your ear and stay honest and um, true to yourself. 
Awesome. And a question for Chad. Uh, Chad, I know going into the Connor fight, you had a, a broken foot. Uh, I know that was, you know, something that's been talked about. And I know recently Connor had said that, you know, when he fought in July and was coming back in December, it might have been a little too soon to fight Jose Aldo. You know, everything else going on it may have been a bit too soon. I mean, how was the timing for you coming off an injury and, and obviously the short notice fight? I mean, did you have, you know, time to recover before getting ready for Frankie Edgar? Oh, yeah, man, of course. I actually broke my thumb, too, in that fight, but, I mean, that was, that was in July. <clears throat> we, you know, I was in a cast, and that's all healed up. We got cleared, and I've been feeling great this entire camp. I mean, I... uh you know, there there hasn't been any issues, obviously, taping it, taking all the precautions and stuff that we need to. But, yeah, man, everything's healed up. Everything's feeling great, so I'm ready to go. I want to ask you, if I could, real quick, about your teammate on this call, Paige Van Zandt. You know, a lot has been said about her, you know, being the future of the women's division. You've been there at Team Alpha Male since the beginning. I just want to get your opinion on Paige and, you know, kind of where you feel like she is in her game. She smells. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Uh, she's she's right on point, I believe. I mean, she trains with us. I mean, she's she's in there working with all these top level guys, one of the best teams in the world. And you know, I have total total confidence in Paige. I mean, I think I think the, the big turning point uh, with with me and her was whenever she did the the tough mutter with me. And uh, I mean, I was going as hard as I possibly could, and she was right there with me the entire time. So. Uh, I mean, I, I, from then on, I knew this girl had a lot of fight, uh, you know, and, and she's uh, a killer athlete. So uh, I think she's right on point. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. And we'll go next to Stephen Morocco with USA Today. I don't know who's out here. That was all broken up. But I didn't hear any of that. Me neither. Aaron, why don't we go to the next question, and we'll see if we can get uh, Steve back on the line. Absolutely. We'll go next to Matesh Karam Chandani with Sony6. Hi. I have a couple of questions for uh, Chad Mendes to start with. Uh, Chad, uh, Frankie's last victory came against uh, Team Alpha Male's founding father, uh, Uri Jafarbo. Going into the octagon, would you be looking to settle the score, or will that play no factor during the fight? And I have another one for you. Uh, you took up the last fight with Connor on very short notice and would be looking to prove a point against Frankie. The winner also moves one inch closer to facing the winner of uh, McGregor uh, and uh, Aldo. Uh, can you tell us if your uh, game plan would still be taking Frankie to the ground, or if you'd be more comfortable standing up? Uh, for the first one, you know, yeah, Frankie just fought Faber. It was a, a, a decision. You know, I got to see a lot of things go on in that fight. Um, you know, that that's great for me, just being able to train with your eye on the daily and, and, you know, know, you know, strengths, weaknesses, you know, what to work on. Uh, you know, I, I feel like that's a, a huge step in my favor. Um, as far as the second one, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking to, to take this fight anywhere it needs to go. I mean, I feel very confident with my wrestling, obviously my hands, um, you know, my, my ground game, everything is on point. So I feel very confident anywhere it goes, and, you know, we're just going to take it this fight at a time, and then we'll deal with uh, what comes next after that. Great. Uh, and I have a question for Paige Van Sands as well. Uh, Paige, you've seen a meteoric rise in the UFC. You'll also be uh, fighting a top five ranked fighter, uh, and and this year has been monumental for you. Let's just say that. Uh, can you give us your thoughts on what this fight means for you? A, a, a chance to break into the top five and beating one of the best strawweights in the division. Of course, you know I'm I'm excited about this matchup. I'm excited to beat someone in the top five and continue to move up in the rankings. Um, it's a great fight for me, and um, I, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm just excited to get back in there, and I'm not going to look past this fight as far as the future goes. I I just plan on beating Rose on December 10th, and then whatever the UFC calls me with after that, I'm going to be ready for. Nice. Um, uh, I have one. I have one for Frankie as well. You're you're riding on a four match Frank uh, Frankie. You're riding on a four match winning streak, and a win against Mendes will cement your uh, uh, spot as the number one contender. Going into the fight, do you still have any anim animosity towards Mendes? 
Oh, I never had animosity towards Mendez. Uh, you know, he's just uh, the next guy that I got to fight to get what I want, you know, and, you know, we obviously have that competitiveness thing going on, but uh, there's no animosity at all. Nice to hear that. And lastly, I have this question for uh, Rose. Uh, this, uh, Rose, this fight is a chance for you to get back in title contention after your dominant performance in your last fight. How do you see yourself going up against someone like Paige, whose fighting style is similar to yours, where she puts pressure on her opponent and keeps moving forward? Um, I don't really see her be, uh, being similar to me um, in terms of style. Like She's more of a um, uh, wrestling base and um, drawn upon and stuff like that. So we're totally two different fighters. But um, in terms of like the position that she was at where I was a year ago, you know, that might be a similarity we could compare. Um, other than that, it's just another fight to me. Right. Thanks, thanks everyone, and good luck to everyone. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to Steve in Marico with USA Today. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I want to ask a question for Chad and, and for Frankie. Uh, Chad, Chad you, were, you were talking about the injuries you suffered prior to 189. And it made me think of uh, Connor's uh, claim afterwards that he suffered an 80% tear of his ACL prior to fighting you. And I was, I was wondering if you, you know, had any opinion, if you, if you think he's coming back too soon, uh, considering he suffered that injury, uh, and then going right into a fight with uh, Aldo. I mean, honestly, I'm tired of talking about all this pre-injury shit with Connor. I mean, bottom line, I lost to Connor. You know, I, I was feeling great in the fight, doing what I needed to do. He caught me with a big punch. You know, that's a fight that, you know, I feel like if I prepare completely for, I win that fight. You know, that being said, uh, yeah, I was definitely um, 100% going going into this camp against Frankie. I mean, like I said, I was in the cast for my thumb, um, got all that cleared off, cleared out, got it off. Uh, my foot is 100% now, and everything, you know, I, I haven't had any issues through camp, knock on wood, and, uh, you know, everything's great. Well, I guess I was just asking if you felt, uh, you know, what your opinion was on whether or not you think it's, too soon for Connor to be fighting all of given they, you know, claim he had an 80% easy health care. Uh, I mean, who knows if that's true or not, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's his deal. I mean, that's not mine. Do you have any opinion on the topic? No, not really, man. <laughs> all right, fair enough. I have a quick one for Chad. Uh, you mentioned before that you said you were title shot. Um, you know, considering... Uh, your, the outcome of the title fights that you've had recently, do you feel you're in a more difficult position in terms of getting a title shot when it comes to what happens after facing Frankie? I mean, no, I don't think so. I, I mean, Frankie, uh, you know, Frankie is a, a guy that's right there at the top. You know, this is a fight, in my opinion, that's going to cement the true number one contender. You know, I felt like that when I got in there and fought against uh, Lamas. You know, and that was a fight that, you know, pushed me right back in line. So, you know, I feel like the winner of this fight should be right back in line for it, whether it's me or Frankie. So, um, you know, obviously I, I fought Aldo, uh, Aldo twice and uh, Connor for the fake belt, but, uh, you know, he, you beat a guy like Frankie who's, who has been just on a tear. You know, you have, you have no choice but to give the guy that, that wins that fight a, a title shot, in my opinion. So. Okay, thank you very much. We'll go next to Emma Bramford with five rounds with Emma. Hi, I've got a question for Chad, please. Um, what do you feel will be the deciding factor in the fight with Frankie? And have you been focusing on any one particular area of um, Frankie's to try to exploit um, this in your fight coming up? You know, I feel like me and Frankie have pretty similar styles as far as uh, our boxing and wrestling. I feel like I have a little more power. Um, people say that he has the, the speed advantage there, but, you know, I think ultimately this is going to come down to heart. You know, I mean, this is a, a fight that, you know, I'm not going to back down. I know Frankie's not going to back down. You know, it's going to come down to grit and, and who wants it the most. You know, we both have that wrestling background and we have that ability to grind. So, uh, you know, this is a fight that, 
you know, fight IQ is going to play a, a huge role in, in that in the heart. So we'll see. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and we'll go next to Casper Rozalowski with Submission Radio Australia. Yeah, hey guys. I uh, just wanted to ask a question to Frankie Edgar. Uh, Frankie, I'm just wondering, what have you been told in terms of title stipulations in regards to this fight? Have you been guaranteed the next shot with a win over Chad? I haven't really been guaranteed anything. You know, speaking of Dana, he pretty much, uh, pretty much said you just don't know what's going to happen with, with Aldo McGregor, you know, and uh, Warren, uh a barn burner between those guys. I mean, I, I think the winner of our fight should get the next title shot. Um, you know, especially me coming off five straight wins over you know top notch guys. But again, nothing's guaranteed, and I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not banking on anything. I just got to make sure I take care of business December 11th and put myself in the best position to uh, to get that title shot. Sure. Uh, before you mentioned that you're not looking past, obviously, the date that you are fighting uh, Chad Mendes on, you also mentioned that you're not getting any younger. It's been almost three years since your last title shot, and it feels like you've been in the queue for another shot for a very long time. At 34 years old, do you feel like this, you know, possibly is one of your last, if not your last, big title runs? I don't know. I'm not putting a, a date on anything. You know, I feel great. Um, I don't feel like I'm getting older. I'm just it's just the, the facts that, you know, time's ticking, and I don't want to sit around and wait for, for anything. You know, I want, you want to stay active. I want to make money. Um, you know, I feel like I'm getting better as, a, as I go along, so I don't want to be, you know, sitting uh, dormant at all. Sure. And just in terms of the fight itself and I guess the matchup, a lot of people have compared the way that you and Chad are somewhat similar. Obviously, you know, you've got more volume with your strikes, possibly Chad Mendes, possibly with the knockout power. In terms of the wrestling, you know, do you think that's going to cancel each other out and you guys are sort of going to be forced to stand against each other? I mean, it could. You never know. I mean, it, it, it could cancel each other out, or you know, or we both can land takedowns and end up on the ground. I mean, anything can happen, man. That's 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 the beauty of fighting. Now, you never know what's going to happen, and you know, especially with styles like Chad and myself, I think we mix it up pretty well. So, I'm expecting this to touch every every part of the octagon. And Chad, just in terms of your obviously preparation for Frankie Edgar, uh, Frankie's last opponent, obviously you're Ryan Faber guy, you train with a lot. Just wondering if you've been given any any you know great insights and how much of a factor your Ryan Faber has been in in your training and preparation for Frankie. Yeah, I mean of course Faber's fighting the day after me, so that you know makes it great that you know he's just fought Frankie and he's he's going through an entire training camp with me. So you know we've been training a lot for this fight. Obviously we sat down. We watched the fight a few times, coaches with you know with Faber, and came up with the with the follow game plan. So yeah, it's definitely something we've talked about and gone over. Awesome! Thanks for your time, guys. Good luck. Uh, conclude the Q and A portion of today's conference. I'd like to turn it back over to Chris Costello for comments and closing remarks. Thanks, Aaron. I want to thank everybody for joining us on today's call. Please note the UFC 194 media conference call will be this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. on the East. Fight Week activities begin a week from tomorrow with UFC Fight Night on Fight Pass Open Workouts at the MGM Grand. An updated schedule of events for the entire week will be sent out today. Everyone, have a group. Please have a great day, and we'll see you next week in Vegas. Thank you. And this does conclude today's conference, everyone. We thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect. <laughs>